This time around, it's all about fungi. Uh, that mycelium network, probably the largest mass of life on Earth, and without which um, life on Earth would not be possible because the mycorrhizal uh, network provided the initial roots for plants to get a grip on land as life emerged from uh, the waters. Um, so I'm here in Glendalough. Uh, it's a drizzly day, but it's the perfect weather for this type of photography. And I'm searching the fallen oak branches and smaller trees uh, in the forest here. And I've come across some specimens. Uh, I have looked at a groupings of mushrooms here. And these mushrooms are the fruiting bodies as such, uh, the purpose of which is to spread spores and to extend the network that connects the trees, um, that devours any waste, the fallen leaves, anything that falls to the floor of the forest, that enriches the soil. So these uh, fungi, um, which have their own kingdom. So we have the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and we have fungi. So let's get busy. I'll just talk through the setup of the camera here. So I have purchased a new ball head. It's a magic ball from Novaflex, and it's wonderful. Uh, why is it wonderful? It's heavy, um, but the ball head itself can rotate in any direction. So you're not restricted from looking straight down. So it's perfect for uh, macro photography as such. Um, at the moment, I have it pointed at a small specimen um, here, a single um, mushroom. I've looked through a couple of groups of mushrooms that are on this oak log covered in moss. But this little chap uh, has just um, drawn me in and that simplicity always appeals to me. Um, now, uh, I'm using, as you may have noticed, uh, a manual focus rail. And although this won't be a manual focus shot, what I find is that when you set a shot up on a tripod um, to uh, limit the amount of movement back and forth that we may do with the tripod to get a good angle, at least the uh, forward and backward motion of the camera can be controlled through using the manual focus rail, even though this will be a, a focus shift shoot, shooting at f4, f4.5. I'm going to try that initially. The underside of the mushroom is a little bit dark. Now, I may resort to a small artificial light. Um, it's a little, what's it called, a nan light. Lito Light SC. Um, now I've only picked this up, I haven't used it before, and as you may well know, I don't like using artificial light, but we'll try it out. It has a nice little diffuser on it, um, and it may um, illuminate the underside of the mushroom. It's quite a beautiful mushroom. lessons all the time. Um, but a lesson with macro photography um, that I've taken on board is just to give each subject sufficient time, become absorbed in its, um, in its presence, give it a little bit of space, move around, look at different uh, aspect ratios, different compositions. Because, and I know I've mentioned this in a previous vlog, uh, on macro photography, um, and I'll link to that up on the right hand side. Um, it really is like a miniature landscape and you need to treat it as such with a foreground, middle ground, background. So um, put the old uh, artificial light back in the bag, uh, depend on the sun above and the diffuser, which is the grey clouds. And uh, I picked a portrait uh, orientation and there's some lovely specular highlights uh, in the background.
it's to be expected when you sit down and relax, have a sandwich, and your eyes wander. And uh, this is a, a much larger specimen that came into my sight as I was munching up on the log. It's a beautiful mushroom, um, but it's positioned beside a wire fence uh, and in grass. Um, it uh, renders the background very green. It's difficult to get an angle on it. Um, so there is a log uh, to one side of it. Um, and I'm using that as best I can. Um, still, it's not standing out to me. But I'm going to plow on through um, and give this chap a go. I may have to resort to the artificial light this time. Um, just to give it a little bit of actually depth and contrast. There's a lot of sheen off the top of it. So I may mix the diffuser with the artificial light and see how that works. And if it works out, I'll put that up on the screen now. I can't believe the midges are out. We're into September. I thought I was getting away with it earlier on, but they've descended on me now as the wind has kind of died down. I've made my way up the very steep slope here in the valley in Glen the Lock. And many of the trunks that have fallen, such as the one um, right behind me here, are bare and slimy. Um, and I had hoped to find some slime mold um, on either pieces of wood that have fallen on the floor or on this particular trunk here. But what I have found are um, a collection of lichens standing up like trees in a landscape. And this is like an escarpment um, that you would expect maybe in, in Africa or, uh, or elsewhere in the world. Uh, you've got these beautiful um, uh, light coloured, light green lichen trees for uh, want of a better comparison. Um, and they are on this dead flat. Um, uh, it's an escarpment. It's like, it's like the top, flat top of a mountain. Um, now I've been struggling for the last 15 or 20 minutes, setting up a tripod or hand holding it. But to get everything in focus, these are so tiny, I can't even show you on the, um, on the screen here. They're on this, uh, let me see if I can bring the camera a little bit closer. Okay, well, maybe I can show. So there's a little bit of flat wood here. And there's a lichen here, here, and here. And when they're viewed through the macro lens, they just, they just look very interesting. So um, but I can't get the camera set up on a tripod anywhere. I've tried to place the camera directly on this, the, the wood here. But it just slides down and I could hold it with something and I've tried a little mini tripod I have. It, nothing will hold on this. So the um, composition that uh, um, I'd hoped to take, I don't think it's feasible. Because there's no way to take this handheld. I'm going to have to take multiple shots, not focus stacking, but maybe three or four manually focus stack shots for each of the trees and blend them together. And then I need to be careful that that landscape as such uh, between those trees is kind of in focus or, or it doesn't stand out as, you know, you don't want to get bands of out of focus area between the, the subject. <laughs> so I better get on with this because um, literally the slope that I'm standing on is a mud bank. And every time I try to to set the camera up, I'm sliding back down the mud bank and it's a fair, um, it's a fair way down. Similarly with the camera bag, I can't even get the camera bag to sit still on this slope. But uh, you know, all, all in the name of photography. So uh, I'm gonna motor on and if, if this turns, even if it doesn't turn out, if this is a disaster, I'll put that disaster up on the screen and we'll move on uh, to the next location. Actually, before I go, if we can see, see the little, a uh, branch up here above my head. It's, it's, that's literally only uh, five or six feet away. Um, so I have my head down in the lichens and a red squirrel. 
I just heard it. It ran right across. And I think it was a surprise to see me absorbed in my work. And uh, it went up the tree to the right of me here. There's a number of red squirrels around. There's deer calling in the mountains. Every time they see me, they give that sharp pitch call. So it's just wonderful being out. Um, I can see the sun coming out in the distant hills now through the oak trees. So I get on with this and we move on to uh, the next spot. So you might be able to see uh, the next uh, subject here is a stinkhorn. And I can smell it sitting, you know, uh, four or five feet away. I can smell it four or five yards away. It is a rotting flesh um, uh, smell, surrounded by large flies. Uh, so it's obviously very popular um, for the insects. A couple of wasps as well, um, hovering around it. Many fungi have a strong sense. Um, if you take the truffle, for example, and the truffle industry, the billion dollar industry, um, you know, truffles are prized. And a truffle finds um, uh, the means to uh, spread its spores um, through its scent. It wants to be dug up. And truffles have varying different scents. The, the stink horn here is going to be ably assisted by the flies uh, carrying its spores off. Um, so the uh, smell has a purpose um, and it really might not, it might not be pleasant to ourselves, uh, but it's certainly attracting the flies and that's what the stink horn wants it to do. So I'm going to take a photograph of the stink horn and we move on to the next location. Well, as I emerge from the oak forest here at Glendalough and we see the beautiful round tower in the background, uh, another vlog has come to an end and I really hope you've enjoyed the pottering around uh, the oak forest in search of fungi. I'm presently listening to a book on Audible by uh, Mervyn Sheldrake, Entangled Life, and it's a fascinating insight into the world of fungi. And that has encouraged me to come out today to just scratch the surface in search of mushrooms. And I've really enjoyed taking the photographs today and experimenting with different techniques. Mm -hmm.